with the Navy. The United States Navy brings you the adventures of Babe Ruth. And here to tell you about the immortal Babe is the man who knew him so well, his pal, the popular sports reporter, Steve Martin. It was the seventh game of the World Series. The score was tied and Babe Ruth was at bat. A home run would win the series for the Yankees and new laurels for the big fella. But I sat there praying that he would strike out and so save his life. We'll bring you the exciting story in just a moment. But first, a short but important message from Jackson Beck. Come in, Jack. Okay, Steve, and thanks. Before Steve Martin gets started with this particular exciting adventure of Babe Ruth, I'd like to remind you young fellows that there's an important place for you in your hometown Navy, the United States Naval Reserve. If you're sort of at loose ends now that you're out of high school and your friends have drifted away, if you want companionship with a great bunch of fellows all interested in the same thing, if you want to be thoroughly trained in a valuable skill, the Naval Reserve is the place for you. You see, this great hometown Navy of ours, the Naval Reserve, is a completely volunteer organization where good friends meet in their spare time, on weekends and on vacations, to study and work and play together. They're trained in such things as photography, welding, engine repair, diesel engines, electronics, in any one of the many Navy skills. And because the Navy believes in perfect training, the skill learned could well take you to the top in civilian life in a time when high specialization means high success. You know, Jack, one of the things I like best about the Naval Reserve is the sports program. Yes, Steve, sports are very important to men of the Navy. You bet. And I don't mind telling you it's developing some of the greatest amateur teams in the country. In every branch of sport. Well, the Navy Reserve fellows study together, work together. Why shouldn't they play well together? Particularly when they're all so full of that wonderful Navy spirit. Look, fellows, if you're not in the Naval Reserve, you ought to be. Join your hometown Navy, the United States Naval Reserve. It will pay you to see your local Navy recruiting officer soon. Now, back to Steve Martin and the adventures of Babe Ruth. It was the last game of the season, and all of the Yankees were on the field except one. The greatest Yankee of them all was mysteriously missing. And in the clubhouse, little manager Huggins was having a fit. Me, I was Fine worried. thing. How do you like that, Steve? The game starts in a minute and the babe isn't here. Gee, I hope nothing happened to him, Hug. What could happen to him? He's not having a good time. Oh, no, Hug. The big fellow wouldn't miss a game on purpose, especially with the World Series starting tomorrow. That's just it. The series starts tomorrow, so he figures today's game isn't important. Even though the stands are jammed with fans who want to see him belt one. That guy is getting too big for his britches. Now, you're wrong, Hug. Babe wouldn't deliberately miss a game. He'd rather play ball than eat. Then where is he? I wish I knew. I'm worried. Well, the big fellow's a guy who ought to be worried. I'll blister his ears plenty when he shows up, and then some. You can tell him that. Well, I've got to get down on the field. I waited a while and then went up to the press box. All through the game, I kept my eye on the Yankee dugout, but the big fellow didn't appear. When the game was over and I followed the Yankees back to the clubhouse, Babe still hadn't shown up. I was getting worried for real. And manager Huggins' face was as black as a thundercloud when the big fella walked in. The babe's clothes were torn, his face was cut and bruised, and his knuckles were skinned. Huggins looked him up and down, and the players got quiet. So you finally decided to drop in and pay us a visit, huh, babe? Uh, I'm sorry I missed the game, Hug, but... But what? Oh, I... I couldn't make it. Oh, you were having too much fun brawling with your bum friends, huh? But my friends aren't bums. Anyhow, I wasn't with my friends. Well, who were you fighting with? I... Never mind. Never mind? Look, I I wish I could tell you, Hug, but I can't. Oh, you can't, huh? Well, I can tell you something, Mr. Big Shot. First off, I'm fining you $500. Huh? No, wait and a minute. if the minute. World Series wasn't starting tomorrow, I'd fire you off the team. Now you get this. No one man, not even Babe Ruth, can walk out on a game and then refuse to explain why. When this series is over, I'm trading you off the club. You're through. All finished as a Yankee. Oh, babe, what's this all about? Where were you this afternoon? Skip it, Steve. Skip it? Are you out of your mind? 
Pug's fit to be tied. Unless you square yourself in a hurry, he'll do as he said, trade you down the river after the World Series. I may not be around after the series. What? What do you mean? Uh, Gotta tell somebody about this. Uh, Look, Steve, you're not to print it. Or tell Hug. Promise me that? Well, uh... Okay, babe, shoot. Well, when I came out of the hotel today to go to the ballpark, a fellow stopped me. Just an ordinary-looking fellow, but with two fingers missing on his right hand, Mm -hmm. like old three-finger brown of the Cubs. He seemed awful upset about it. Excuse me, babe. I, uh, I mean, Mr. Ruth. Oh, babe's okay, buddy. What can I do for you? It's, uh, it's my kid, my little boy. He's, he's awful sick. Infantile paralysis. Oh, that's too bad. The, uh, the doctor thought that... Well, my boy's a great fan of yours. He's got a scrapbook full of pictures. The doctor thought if you could come over for a minute and see my boy, it might help him get well. Oh, sure. I'll come over right after the game. Oh, well, can't you the... come now, babe? It's just a few minutes from here, and I've got my car. I can get you back to the stadium in plenty of time for the game. Okay, then. Let's go. We walked over to his car. It was a sedan, and he opened the door. I started to get in. Then I noticed three other guys in the back seat. I didn't like their look, Steve, but before I could do anything, the fellow behind me gave me a hard push and sent me sprawling into the car. And then one of the guys hit me behind the ear with a blackjack. Holy smokes, then what, babe? Well, when I woke up, Steve, I was in a room without much furniture in it. The guy with the fingers missing, who seemed to be the boss of the crowd, was there. And three other lads. There was a gravelly-voiced little guy who held a gun on me. And two gorillas had been in the car. Well, the boss one gave me a glass of water. And then he made his problem. Okay, babe, the Yanks are nine of five favorites to win a World Series. But they can't win if you don't try. If you don't hit any home runs. So I want you not to try. You mean... You mean you want me to throw the series? Why, you dirty... Stay where you are, big boy. I got a very itchy trigger. Thing. You can't scare me. Only a Look, jerk I... don't know enough to be scared sometimes, babe. You're no jerk, so listen. The Yanks are going to lose a series. Yeah? That's what you think. I know. When they lose, you'll get 50,000 bucks. But if you cross us up, you'll get the business. And how? Well, babe, what do you say? This is what I say. You did it, my young Get the car. I knocked the gun away from the squeaky voiced guy. Dropped the boss man with a right. The two big gorillas jumped me, and then the little runt hit me with his gun butt. Pretty soon I got the gun or blackjack on the noggin, and I went to sleep again. And when I woke up this time, Steve, they were dumping me out of their car up near Yonkers. I managed to pick up a ride, and uh, you know the rest, Steve. Holy cow. But, babe, why didn't you tell that to Hug? Oh, those mugs said if I did, they'd put a bullet in Hug, too. And I know they meant business. Oh. Well, well, don't just sit there, babe. Come on, we'll go to the police. No, no, Steve. I don't know who those guys are or where they are. And even if I did, they'd deny everything. It'd just cause a huge publicity stink. And if we lose the series, it might kill baseball. And what are you going to do? What do you suppose... I'll do my darndest to win the series, of course. But those mugs said they'd kill you if you did. Oh, they were just bluffing. Don't give me that, babe. You said just before you were sure they meant business. Now, babe, there's only one thing to do. You can't play in this series. Are you kidding? No. Your life is at stake. I'll save it, Steve. No lousy racketeers are going to scare me or dirty up the greatest game in the world, either. Now, get out of here, please, Steve, and let me go to bed. I've got a World Series coming up tomorrow. I'm convinced that most of the gray hairs I've got today started sprouting in that World Series. Every time the big fellow made a hit, I caught my breath and listened for the sound of a pistol over the noise of the crowd. The games went to three and three, and then the seventh and deciding game came up in the stadium. Oh, babe. Yeah? What is it, Steve? Look, babe, this is the deciding game. If you win it, you... You might... Steve, let's not go into that again. Go on back up to the press box. I'm going out for right field. Both pitches were hot, and they went into the ninth inning tied one and one. Pennock set the enemy down in order in their ninth, 
And it was the Yanks' turn with the top of their batting order coming up. Coombs flied out, and it was Koenig's turn. Koenig went out in an infield roller. And then you should have heard the crowd as the big fellow minced up to the plate, swinging three bats. The big fellow took a strike, then two balls, then he fouled off one. Then he took another ball. Here was the big one now. I found myself praying that he'd strike out and save his life. Then the pitch came, a fast one, and I closed my eyes. I heard a ringing crack. And the crowd went crazy. I opened my eyes to see the ball arch high and far into the bleachers. I was waiting for the sound of the shot, waiting to see my friend fall. My heart was hammering at my ribs as he turned third and started for the plate taking off his cap to the howling mob. And then I felt a hand on my shoulder and I spun around. It was a man in a gray suit whom I'd seen in the stands throughout the series. Now, he said, we got them, Martin. You, you did, sir? Yes, all of them. Fingers Gerhardt, Joey May, his gravelly voice Stooge, all of them. This was the only game they came to, the big one. They had betting receipts on them and May had a gun. I think he was getting ready to use it on Ruth. Good Lord. The FBI was after those rats for a long time, but we got them at last, thanks to your descriptions and the big fella's courage. I looked back at the field, and the big fella was just disappearing into the Yankees' dugout, surrounded by his happy, cheering teammates. He was safe, and my eyes got a little misty. The big fella had done the impossible again, and made it stick. There you have this adventure of Babe Ruth. Interesting and exciting, wasn't it? But so is life in the Naval Reserve interesting and exciting. You can say that again, Jack. There's a young fellow in our block who, a couple of years ago, was spending his nights hanging around the corner drugstore or the pool room just loafing, doing nothing for himself or anybody else. Then he happened to get interested in photography. And knowing that the best photographic training in our town was being given by the Naval Reserve, he joined. And, Jack, you should see that boy today. I wish I could. All of a sudden, he's alive. He thinks. He doesn't waste his time. And like the Naval Reserve itself, he's a real solid asset to the whole community. And it all happened because this chap discovered an interest. And the Naval Reserve offered him the chance to make something of himself. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up as one of the greatest photographers in the whole country. It's good to see him moving up, Jack. Yes, and that can happen to you, too. Training, education, good companions, fun, and relaxation. All those things are offered. Take advantage of them. Stop in at your local Navy recruiting office. You'll find that the officer in charge is a friendly man who'll quickly tell you how you can profitably spend your spare time in your hometown peacetime Navy, the United States Naval Reserve. By the way, Steve Martin, what have you lined up for next week? Well, next week, Jack, I'm going to tell you how the big fellow returned to the pitcher's box to catch a rat... And save a brilliant young catcher from the penitentiary. The Adventures of Babe Ruth is written by Ben Peter Freeman, produced by Woody Close, directed by Ronald Dawson, and presented by the United States Navy. (laughs) 